Greetings. This is Michael Earlywine. I'm the founder of the All Music Guide, allmusic.com. It's the largest collection of music reviews, ratings, and discographies on the planet. The following interview is part of the Michigan Music Project. Videos on noteworthy musicians, artists, venues, and music experts in the Michigan area. And source material for a documentary that we're putting together on the Michigan music scene. Here the focus is on the Earthwork Music Collective, a remarkable group of young Michigan musicians who work together to support the community and one another. Well, I got into music, um, I think, just by being born into a wonderful family, you know, that really appreciated music. My dad especially is just a huge music lover and um, he really listens to music and thinks about music in a way that, that was unique. I think now that I've grown up, I realized it was really special to have that gift and, and to um, be sort of given the chance to really listen to all different kinds of music and to be encouraged to play it, you know, music as much as I wanted to or had interest to and be given instruments and things as a kid. So I, um, I don't really remember not loving it. Yes, you know, I don't remember a time where music didn't feel like it was part of my body, part of who I was. I loved to sing right away, you know, my voice was a really special part of, of growing up and just like experiencing life, my voice was part of that for me. And um, I remember as a little girl, I just would make up songs all the time, just loved to pretend I was a great singer, right? And I grew up listening to those great singers, so I had good models to, to just, you know, try to emulate. Um, I started playing violin when I was like eight, and piano, you know, the piano was around the house, so I would tinker around on it and kind of fell in love with the piano, I think, most of all, actually, as a little kid. I'd just play on it for a long time, and sometimes make movies up in my head and play the score, you know, just play for a long time, and that was really fun. Um, so it was just sort of there, but I started writing songs when I was 11 on the guitar, inspired by my older sister who had been writing songs and playing guitar. And some of my heroes, like Ani DeFranco, I sort of realized that was a good catalyst for writing songs. So I think that was when it really clicked that music was something that I really wanted to do that was kind of a way of expressing who I was instead of just something that was part of me. It kind of became a little more focused in, in expression and, and like an evolution, I guess, of that love of music. kind of music I was exposed to was, was, it was pretty broad, you know, there was like all different kinds and that was mostly because my dad loved all different kinds of music and um, a lot of jazz, I mean, there was, that was the thing that was always on. When people come to visit, there was always some jazz on the stereo, and, but really good jazz, you know, and, and the kind that just he called the groove music, you know, just really stuff that just kind of moved you in, along and, and, and engaging. It was always kind of like a party, you know jazz music, music on, you know, people are coming over. And, but then, you know, in the car we listened to a lot of soul music and, and music of just great singers, you know, and I think my dad really loved singers more than anything else and really had an ear for, like, the, the singers that could capture their, their heart and put it out there for you to receive it, like, in a very, very special way. And I think it was unique just in the amount of appreciation my dad had for these singers and this, these songwriters and, um, the music in general, just he really loved good music and when he saw and recognized it as good, he wanted to share that with us in a deep way and he wanted us to see it. He would just point at it over and over and show us what was so beautiful about it in a way that, that I think is unique, you know, not just, oh, I love this songwriter, I love this guy singing or don't you like Bob Marley, you know, over here we all listen to Bob Marley or whatever. It was you know, Bob Marley is great, listen to this one song, listen to this moment in this one song. Isn't that just amazing, you know? And and even as a little kid, it, this was sort of around, this idea of music being more than just something in the background, but something that you appreciate and really pay attention to. And that's really special, you know, that can change your life, that can have a moment, you have a moment with a song that is, that is
is something that can change you, you know, more than just it being something that you put on to, you know, kind of make the scene a little nicer. It was something very special. And he would point that out to, to adults before, you know, when I was a kid, he would be pointing that out to adults around me. And so then I would listen, you know, and then as I became an adult, then he's finally pointing it out to me. But here I was as a little kid hearing you point out, or my dad point out all those things. And so it was, I think that was unique and in, you know, some of the situations I've been in. I don't think everybody has that pointed out to them all along the way. I think the singers that really move me um, now are the same ones that moved me when I was a kid. I feel like, I mean, there's some expansion to that, but I don't think it's changed a huge amount. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of soul singers, and I remember just like, Brenton Woods was one of my favorites. I just loved him. I loved his kind of light, hearted, soulful, like, emotion that he could put in a song where it was, would get you, but it wasn't necessarily always heavy. He was kind of a pretty light singer, and I really loved his stuff. And I loved Barbara Lewis. She was just, my, and my dad loved Barbara Lewis, but she was just a heartbreaker. Like, every word, everything she said was just, like, I just feel it. I love her songs. I, I always want to sing them, but I just can't do it because they're just so special, uniquely hers. And Irma Thomas, of course, I love. And um, Sam Cooke was just, you know, a big one. And um, then Joan Baez, too. There was some of her music that, you know, a few specific songs, especially that um, we listened to that I just loved of hers. And um, then my mom loved Bob Dylan and Neil Young, which I also love tremendously. And so. Um, and then she also kind of uh, like got some of the country, old country singers like Hank Williams and Jimmy Rogers, you know, she would play some of that stuff. And, and you know, Pete Seeger. So it had a good mix of the soul and like the classic folk singers, you know, all great singers. And then a lot of just instrumental music too, you know, jazz music and some of George Winston piano pieces and like, um, and then a lot of world music. Um, that was around when I was a kid too, you know, and I just loved it all. And but I was lucky in that it was all really good stuff, you know. I was kind of the best of the best that I got exposed to. And then, you know, as I grew into music, I had a pretty good foundation, you know. But I, I definitely went through my phases, you know. I, I loved all the poppy stuff like Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston too, because they're also great singers, you know. And I could recognize that, even though. It wasn't as classic stuff, you know, and, and like I remember getting kind of teased by my sisters, like, oh, that's just the cheesy new stuff, but I could appreciate their singing. And I got into country singers, you know, as a teenager, like Garth Brooks, I loved Garth Brooks, and George Strait, and Shania Twain, you know, I, I love those cheesy country, like, heart songs, and they were great singers too. So, I mean, kind of had this evolution of just appreciating music that moved me, and I never really felt ashamed of liking music that maybe other people thought was dumb or cheesy or, or this or that. I, I just really liked what I liked and I think that maybe was something that I picked up from just being exposed to so much good music. And You know, I got into newer folk songwriters, like Patty Griffin is one of my favorites and I actually got to meet her, but I heard her voice first live, luckily, and just in a small place and I was immediately moved. You know, she was a huge influence to me just in that she just cut through everything, you know, and just right there, clear as a bell. Her heart was just right out there. And that's something that I really resonated with. I loved Ben Harper. And, uh, Ani DeFranco was a huge, during my angsty teenage years, she was a great influence on me. And just being brave, you know, being a brave woman and, and singing out and, and not being afraid to try different kinds of music. You know, I really, she's a great guitar player, and, um, great musician. And, you know, it's just expanding. I love Jimi Hendrix. I remember when I first started playing guitar, I listened to a lot of Jimi Hendrix. And not that I was ever a great guitar player, like, you know, even anywhere close to what he was doing or even interested in necessarily learning a ton of licks. I just loved his playing, you know, got into it. So it, it just evolves all the time, you know. And now it's just, you know, smaller people that I have met, a lot of them are the ones that are inspiring me most. Like, I love hearing the songs live in a small room, so a lot of times now, those are the voices that are most inspiring me, just being with someone and watching them give their song in person that gets me all fueled up.
Well, I started realizing that I had something I wanted to express through music when I started playing the guitar and writing songs. And I realized that I could write songs, you know. For some reason, the guitar, I wrote on the piano instrumental pieces all the time, but when I picked up the guitar, I wanted words to come out more than I really had before. And, and that, I think, was partly influenced by my sister, who was writing songs on the guitar. And it just became all of a sudden more doable, and maybe it was my age, so, you know, kind of at that right point. So I just started writing and I realized there was a lot that I wanted to say and put out there. And um, so I just, you know, began writing little songs and immediately wanted to record them, you know. And I became interested in the recording process too. I wanted to get a four track and, and have a way to do that. And I was lucky and my family supported me in that. So I really loved the idea of recording and got excited every time I created a song I wanted to record it so that I could share it, you know. And it was a very kind of innocent wanting to share, not so much of wanting to be seen, but just really wanting to share this, this music. And and I was really lucky, my sister and my family was just very encouraging, and my friends too at the time. People liked, liked hearing my songs, so I had people to play them for, which is what was exciting for me. And I, my sister was in college in, in Ann Arbor at U of M, and on the weekends she would invite me down to go visit her and, and hang out with her and her friends. So I'd take the bus all the way down there, you know, at a pretty young age, between 13 and 14, and go stay the weekend with her. And her friends were just so welcoming and they weren't, you know, like in the normal college realm of being kind of too hip or whatever to pay attention to a little, you know, 12 or 13 year old. They were just very, you know, awesome, welcoming, wholesome people. and they. They really encouraged my music too, so that was so exciting because here are these people I thought were just so great. These people that were much older than me that were just doing all this cool stuff. They're artists, musicians, you know, and just kind of hip, really hip people. And they they were willing to listen to my songs and they were appreciative of these songs and wanted to hear them again and would ask, you know. And so that was a huge, huge thing and a huge kind of bolster to keep me going and realize, oh, this is something I can do. And I kept going, you know, I wrote songs, and it was like that for a long time where, you know, the next few years where I was just, you know, writing songs and sharing them and getting a lot out of that. Um, and I think it was around when I was 16 or 17, I lived in a house in Ann Arbor um, with some friends, and um, I must have been 17. I had a really close friend that lived there with me, and he passed away, and he overdosed. And uh, about a year later, or two maybe, um, not so great with the time frame, but I was working on a song for him, and I felt like his, he came to me and told me that I shouldn't just write for myself anymore, and that I shouldn't write a sad song about him, but I should write a song for him that would inspire other people and help other people heal, and it was just a weird moment. It wasn't like a ghost. It was just a feeling, and it was a message that was really clear, and he was always a great supporter. His name was Dave, and he was really a good friend of mine. I had this moment where whatever that was, whether it was in my mind or in reality, who cares? It was that my music wasn't just for me. And and that changed my whole way I looked at it. And it wasn't that I didn't write about myself anymore or my own process, but it was coming from a very different place where it was for a different purpose. And it was to kind of give something. I always wanted to try to give something from then on. And my songs totally changed after that. They were less moody and less sort of kind of angsty and in this sort of really emotional place and they, they, they kind of something shifted to where they were more accessible and more and it was just a shift in me I think of a desire to not just do that anymore but to make it for everybody and useful somehow and and then I realized that was kind of always what I wanted to do but I just hadn't had that epiphany of how to do it and you know, I personally look at it as a gift from my friend, you know. He kind of went beyond and saw something that he was able to give back. But that might seem crazy to somebody else. So, you know, then it's just whatever happened inside of me through losing that friend awoke me up, you know. And I wrote a song for him called Poor Dave. And it was, it was sort of a crossover for me into a different place. And then I recorded a little EP at that point of songs at, at home. And, um, and started you know, trying to get my music out there a little more. And it started being seen differently. It was like the moment I changed, something changed outside too. And I can't explain it any more than that, but that was a really pivotal time where something shifted that I wanted to, to 
offer. I really felt like I had more of a, a duty somehow to, to do something with this music than, than just for me, you know? And I still don't fully understand all of it, and I don't think that I should ever understand it all. But So that was a really, really big moment. Um, but I didn't really know how to do it, you know? And it wasn't until I met Seth that I understood how it could be done. song, I guess, is, is sort of mysterious to me, and I never thought too much about it. Like, I didn't, when I sat down to write my first song, I didn't have this whole pressure of, of it being my first song I wrote, and some people will talk about, like, I just kind of did it, you know, and I think I had sort of the ignorance is bliss in that way, where it was just another thing you could do. It wasn't really like this big art that I wanted to try to make sure that I was up to par on. I just really, so it came from really feeling in a moment and really just wanting to dig into that moment and express a feeling, you know, and it was a way for me to deal with all the emotions that were going through me. You know, I started it as a teenager, which is a great time to have an outlet for your emotions that are changing so fast. And But I also just think that as a person, I have a lot that I need to put out and I'm not the best communicator in other ways of my life, you know, so, I, and I'm also kind of shy, so for me music was a way to express things that I couldn't find words for, or a way to share with anyone, you know, but the really good ones are just come out of a feeling, and just sit with that feeling, and don't, don't try to make it anything else, you know, and I don't know that they're good in anyone else's eyes, or worry about that too much, and when I do, they're usually, it's usually bad. So um, when I when I just when it feels good in my heart is when I feel like it's good. It's like oh, that felt great. You know, that was like all oh, just came together, and that was a spiritual moment. That's great. You know, more so than is so and so going to like this song? Or where does this song fit in the music world? You know, that all comes later, and you have to do that too. It's not that I don't ever think or worry about those things, but when I'm in a good place, I'm not worried about those things.